Welcome to Talk Save, Culture Talks, the podcast of Paradisec, the Pacific and Regional Archive for Digital Sources in Endangered Cultures. I'm Jody Kell. And I'm Stephen Gagao. These are conversations with people who have personal and cultural connections to the languages and music in our archive. As producers of this podcast, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which it is recorded and pay our respects to their elders past and present. We extend that respect to all First Nation contributors and listeners. And please be aware that this podcast may contain the voices of deceased people. This is a special episode which is the second of a two-part series about music of central province of Papua New Guinea. It features recordings of the PNG Paravata Singers of Canberra made in 2023 by the Paradisic team. We introduced the group in the previous episode 13 singing Paravata. Now we hear from them again as they share Papua New Guinean Sene music and dance. You can also watch their self-introductions and footage of the dances they perform in this episode on our YouTube channel. This episode is a bit different to our usual format. When we originally approached the group to talk about Periveta singing, they were inspired by the Paradisec archive to expand their contribution to include a performance of Sene. Sene is a hirimotu word which means cultural, traditional items. As a result, the episode is based on musical performance rather than interviews, and you will hear group members Deveni Temu and Tommy Dietz introduce and explain the meaning of the songs. This episode also includes excerpts from the MG1 and IC1 collections held in the Paradisic Archive. The MG1 collection was recorded by Australian anthropologist Murray Groves in the late 1950s and early 1960s. The IC1 collection was recorded during a university student exchange program in the late 1960s by Ian Campbell. You can hear more about these collectors in episode 13. Before we hear them sing, we will listen to a recording from the MG1 collection from the 1950s. It is a hehona, a type of Motuan song about the lakatoi and the hiri trade. Lakatoi is the Motuan word for a double hull or sometimes triple hull seafaring canoe with a claw-shaped sail used for the hiri trade conducted between the Motuans and the people of the Gulf of Papua to the west. We discussed the hiri trade and the trade winds that carry the lakatoi in the previous episodes 10 and 11. The main reason for the hiri trade was that Motuan people live in a dry region, so they traded clay pots for sago and other cultural wealth items which could not be grown or harvested locally. <laughs> Oh, 
Now come on out. Now we will hear the Canberra group will start their performance with a Hehona song. This Ehona is about the origins of the Lakatoi, which started with a legendary character named Edai Siabo from around Boira village, who was instructed by the gods in a dream to build this type of canoe to start the Hiri trade. Ehona is an amazing motto chant song. It's a traditional one. And Hona is the basis of the whole Hiri trade expedition that happened between the Motu people and the Gulf people. second number is Lokoru. Lokoru is a song sung during the festive times of the return of the Hiri expeditions. And it was a great time of enormous joy because not only did the uh, Hiri sailors bring back food and material goods and buatau and mats and all kinds of things from the Gulf District, but they also came back alive. And it was a terribly traumatic and stressful uh, several months when these uh, sailors would go sail all the way up the Gulf and stay there and collect their goods and wait for the, um, the, the correct trade winds to bring them back. And after a few months, they would turn back, return, 
and there'd be great celebration. The ladies would um, uh, jump on board the, the lagatoi and sway their hips. They would sing funny nonsense songs just for sheer joy. And this is one of them. Lokoru, uh, this is about a girl who uh, the humor is she serves her mother some food and she breaks wind in the process and she serves her father some food and she breaks wind in the process and they're encouraging her to walk around um, with her breasts uh, waving around. It's all for fun, good fun. So how may we start it? The second one is also from Motu, and Tommy will explain. Uh, this next one is a song called Komada, Komada Maikui. It's a nursery rhyme. It's a children's nursery song, and it's about uh, collecting spider conch shells. Once the reef is out, the reef is exposed, and that's the time to go and play and collect seashells. Loko, eh, pardon me. Komada Maikui. Mother my queen, Tidi my hole, hole, Raga, Rago, if you get it, if you get it. Come on, my queen, Tidi my hole, hole. Mother my queen, Tidi my hole. Now we're going to go to um, Aroma, Marshall Lagoon. And so the first of this is Ekura Kwanama. This is a folk song from Kapari village. And the composer of this Folk song is a woman and she's unnamed, but she is in an abusive relationship. And so she actually names her husband who abuses her daily. And so one day she decided it's enough and walked out of the house and left home, walking along the beach to find her beautiful home. And so these three verses of it Ray Ray in the Ray Ray has really belted me up and I'm in pain. And then the next line is I'm walking along the beach and crossing all these rivers and streams and cannot make it there. And the last verse is in her mind's eye, she sees that her mom and dad are coming to fetch her, rescue her, but unfortunately she hasn't made it. So, no violence. To women, which is very topical these days. So this is Ekura Kwanama. Ekura Kwanama, Baburi Bonama, Ekura Kwanama. Ekura Kwanama, Baburi Bonama, Ekura Kwanama.
village, a folk song. These folk songs were revived in September 1974 when my father and his two cousins brought our village girls to perform at the New Guinea Art Festival. And so these wonderful people agreed to learn two of the, there's in total 16 of them, but I've taught three of them to these wonderful people. They are all motu speakers. A lot of them don't speak Aroma or Kekalomai language. But that's how it is in the diaspora. We learn and share with each other. So this one is Eyo Tamao, Tamao Rai Tamao. Tamao is this pool. And in our villages, there's a sago species that grows wild in the depths of the forest. And it's in this pool and it has these great big spikes or needles and it's very difficult to access and make the sago, and it has a reddish coloring, a coloring, so it is very prized. And so, literally, it says, "Eyo tamao tamao rai tamao." You are standing there, tall and wonderful, and think we can't get you. We're coming to get you today. We will come and cut you down, cut down all your um, spikes, break them all into smithereens, and we will get the sago and rush home. And so you tamao, tamao, rai, tamao. Eyo tamao, tamao rai, tamao. Eyo tamao. We are still on the Aroma Coast. And again, this one comes from Kapari village again. 
and it's called Geno Oiva Vinevere. So this young woman's name is Geno Vavine is a woman Vere is chiefly. So it's Geno Oiva Vinevere. Geno Oiva Vinevere. You are, we're looking at you and your tattoos. Salute's got underneath her. These are the traditional tattoos in this cloth. And so in this particular song, when the young woman is married, the boys, sisters, and all the women, family members come to take her out of the family home. And this is sung as a farewell to her. Geno Oiva Vinevere, Geno, you're a woman of chiefly rank because your body tattoos tell us so. When you leave this house and tomorrow they're gonna take you to the gardens and you will see from where you are and look at our landmark, which is a stream that divides the villages, that that is our landmark and you will learn to come back, but you are going to be with your husband. And it also talks about first time she goes to the gardens and what warns her that it's the end of the day, stop working, we have to go home. Ulo Manu, you will hear it, is the magpie. The magpie will announce the end of the day, stop your work, get home, quick. And no way we never of the Sene items is a Kitoro. Kitoro is a regal central item, but also along the coastal villages of Papua New Guinea, this Kitoro is uh, danced and sung. And Kitoro in our aroma is this actual Kitoro. This is the Kitoro. More to say Gaba, literally translates as bell. So with this, particular lyrics. They were mostly compi composed by uh, Second World War 
uh, laborer or carriers, the so-called Fazuazi angels. And so these particular ones, when the young men were taken out of their villages, some of them became very homesick and some of them were wanting to get back home, but they couldn't. So they composed these songs like Gaire Natano Arana. Yeah, Gaire Natano, there's a place called Gaire, the village, and then Tano is land, the ground. So this is Gaire Natano Arana, Bole no me, Bole no me kisere vavine. Vavine, again, woman or a girl, and obviously these people are thinking of their girlfriends or their mothers back home. And then the second line also says, Kolo agu vavine, I left my girlfriend in the village. She is most beautifully formed. So when I get back from this terrible job, we will meet and I will kiss her from her nose to the toenails. And she is beautiful, beautifully formed. And then the other verses talk about while they're coming back, they see this amazing bird. It's the Gora pigeon. So they say about that too. And the last verse is saying bye-bye. Okay, Gaire Natano. Has been taken on a journey through the Sene traditional music of the central province. The last song was a kitoro from the Rigo district. And to acknowledge the performance and the value the group places on continuing cultural knowledge, we link to the archive with a kitoro from the IC1 collection recorded in Tubaseria village in the 1960s. <laughs> Thank you to the PNG Peraveta Singers of Canberra for sharing this wonderful Sene performance. 
these recordings will be added to the Paradisic Archive to supplement the Sene recordings already held in the MG1 and IC1 collections. You can find them in the PC2 collection. If you would like to access these collections and the TCT1 collection of our podcast recordings, or find out more about Paradisec, the work we do, and the online catalogue, you can visit our website at www.paradisec.org.au. Talk Save Culture Talks was launched as part of the United Nations International Year of Indigenous Languages in 2019. We would like to acknowledge the support of the Australian Research Council's Centre of Excellence for the Dynamics of Language and the University of Sydney, the University of Melbourne and the Australian National University.